Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Karen Lancaster Ellis. And I am Michelle Nicholson. Our study today is titled Efficiency versus Effectiveness, a description of the challenges in police in Trinidad and Tobago. What's our motivation to do a study of this nature? We are both involved in the national security field. We are interested in the improvement in our country. We are both citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Currently, there's a high rate of crime and there's increasing violence in Trinidad and Tobago. And just to give you a little idea in terms of what of some of our challenges, we just have the short video that we would like to share with you all. Stay in Trinidad, and when people think of Trinidad, they usually think of steel pan drums, carnival, celebrations, and good times. And Trinidad itself is a pretty rich country. They've got plenty of oil and gas deposits, and the GDP per capita here is 18,000. Unfortunately, over the past 15 years, Trinidad sees his murder rate go from about 100 a year to 500 a year. And that's mostly due to warring gang factions in neighborhoods below me, like Laventille, which fight ruthless turf wars, sometimes over just one block. <laughs> So how did these gangs get so powerful? Many of them have gotten intertwined in politics, doing favors for politicians and receiving lucrative government contracts for public works and construction projects meant to help alleviate unemployment. Adding to that, Trinidad is only seven miles away from Venezuela. In the past few years, it has reemerged as a major transshipment point for drugs to West Africa and the United States. Border Patrol officers say they found 732 pounds worth of cocaine a recent bust in Virginia had over $100 million worth of cocaine that originated in Trinidad. So much cocaine, we can't even tell you where we shot this video. While the drugs only stopped in Trinidad temporarily, the guns brought in as protection stay. Many on the island think that corrupt politicians and business leaders are heavily involved. And they say that this culture of corruption and impunity filters down to a street level where gangs do not fear the rule of law. Okay, that just gives us an idea as to what's happening currently in Trinidad and Tobago. In addition to that, we have a situation where police legitimacy is very low. Um, according to Maguire et al., some of the prominent conceptual and measurement models used in previous research are not empirically valid in the Trinidadian context. Further, Chady et al., 2017, talks about the high fear of crime. And under Article 3 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it, guarantees, it suggests that persons must have enjoyment of life, liberty, and security of person. And even in our very constitution, these rights are also enshrined. Over the years, we have seen an expansion of our security industry. We've built gated communities. We've had budgetary allocations, very budgetary allocations in the last four years actually the annual allocation to the Ministry of National Security was pegged at TT 5.5 billion dollars and there have been discourses in Parliament and in the media which suggest that the police service has become very inefficient and ineffective in addition to that quite often we see in the media stories such as these which suggest the level of crime in Trinidad and Tobago as well as violence that is plaguing our society and we have been searching for solutions. We've tried several things. Mastrovsky, Professor Sherman, we have done manpower audit. We've even hired a foreign commission of police. We're currently searching for a new commission of police. We've tried hotspot policing, evidence-based policing, intelligence-led policing, and the list goes on. We've also tried joint army police patrols. And we've also discussed the idea of having given soldiers the powers of the police, uh, all aimed at improving our efficiency. So Robert Peel, in his principle, advocated that the test of police efficiency is the absence of crime and disorder and not the visible evidence of police action in dealing with them. In 2015, serious crimes in Trinidad and Tobago was 11,135. That was the lowest it had been for over 30 years. In 2016, it increased slightly to 11,493. Yet still, the police service have seen reports in the media such as these. Police under fire, Rafik blazes local officers for unsolved murders. 
poor detection continues to dog police, and the list goes on. We tried in this study to come up with a definition of efficiency and effectiveness, and one we looked at was by Skoga, 1976, who defined efficiency as a concept by which we assess the processing activity of organizations, that is, how they go about facing problems. And effectiveness by Skogan as well, a concept which denotes their goal matching, that is the ability to solve substantive problems. What are the objectives in our study? First, we want to identify and describe some of the challenges faced in policing. We also want to gain a better understanding of these challenges. We want to be able to describe the experiences working with the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and, within the Trinidad and in the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. We want to be able to advance recommendations at the end of the study in order to improve the current situation. We also want to ascertain how police and stakeholders view themselves and to advance some suggestions for interventions that can be adopted. Purpose. According to Wallace 2016, for there to be effective police leadership, we must have discipline and a highly contemporized environment. Casey and Mitchell 2007, this highlighted that in the 21st century, the police must understand and effectively operate in a complex social, political, and organizational environment. And when we looked at the literature, we basically saw some similar themes. Selwyn Ryan's crime report talks about the corruption in the police service and poor management. Kinsey et al. 1986 talks about democratic accountability, which basically looked at corruption as well in police agencies, which he suggested causes a decline in confidence, which would require some reforms subsequently to improve the situation. Bats et al. 2012, he highlighted the fact that police, although they have had some success, they, have still been, they are still using archaic and useless management practices. Similarly, Miller et al. 2009 looked at business leaders as well as effective police leadership, and he found that some similar characteristics were in both types of um, leaders. However, Carrington et al. 1997 suggested that police agencies must improve in their management practices if they are to achieve, if they are to overcome the challenges of the 21st century, if they are to overcome police challenges. And we continued with the lit review, and we looked at Sinclair and Miller, and they found that it was impossible to determine whether changes in practices produces changes in crime. They also looked at the lack of a yardstick for evaluating results, and further on in the study, you would also realize that some of the participants in the study came up with the same thing about the lack of yardstick. Carrington et al. 1997 also look, talked about the restructuring of the patrols. That also came out in the study, as you would see. There's also the operational environment that is not significant on efficiency of per patrols. And that was found by Carrington et al. 1997. Lee and Simple, found the environmental has an impact on forces. And Higgins and Hales 2017 thought that police must be engaged and proactive and informed. If they are not engaged and they are not proactive and they are not informed, then they would not be able to reach the goal set out and that is to put, bring crime to a level that is acceptable. The methodology, um, we looked at unstructured interviews. The questions were asked to the TTPS, and that is the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Officers. We looked at officers from the first and second division. Then we had officers from the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force, and those were commissioned officers and non-commissioned officers. We looked at 30 respondents, and we also had purposive sampling, and I want to make an um, example of that. 
for example, in the military, we only looked at those soldiers who would have been engaged with the police doing the joint patrols. So we, we narrowed it down to get exactly, because that is what we wanted to find out, working with the police to come up with the best solution for crime. The preliminary findings, and the first one, in the first one, we found coming out of the study, the appropriate yardstick for measuring performance. That came out. So in other words, there were respondents who used those exact words. And so that's a link with the slide we had before where the researchers in the lit review were speaking about the yardstick. We, Sinclair and Miller, 1984, also found that a lack of a common yardstick for evaluating results. So there's this common theme that is keep coming up over and over, and that is the common yardstick. Then we had Drake and Simper 2005, and they taught that new public policy objective to assess police performance survey data should not be used as a basis to assess performance. They found that specifically in their study. And we have an excerpt from a respondent, which was a male from the first division, that is the police service. And um, that person said, because inefficient measures are used to measure their performance, this is artificial research methods that are implemented to get outcome. So therefore, a division, because of how the targets were set, were awarded for good performance, when in fact, their performance was reduced. Also, the methodology used in deciding the various measurements don't have much validity. Therefore, a lot of the measurements for good performance may be deemed an affront to an evaluation process. We had another respondent, this time a soldier, who works with the police, and he too came up with, there should be a yardstick for measuring efficiency and effectiveness. Preliminary findings number two, and the information that was coming out from this, fa the findings from preliminary number two is that poor communication and lack of knowledge were some of the things. There was no synergy of objectives. And Higgins and Hales, 2017, police must be informed. So what we are saying is that coming out of this, if the police are not informed, then there's poor communication and there will be lack of knowledge and then there will be no synergy of objectives, meaning the police service would have one set of objectives on one side and the defense force with another set of objectives. And these two groups are coming together to work for a common goal, but they don't have that synergy of objective. They are not informed. So that there's a disjoint in the whole effort. Respondent number 38, a male from the first division, which is the police service, by doing joint patrols with the police in the main hotspot areas, also sharing intelligence with the police at times, planning strategies and tactics to deal with particular th threats within the community. In addition, the Defense Force provides coverage on various seafronts via the Coast Guard, and they work hand in hand with the then organized crime and narcotic unit to prevent the illegal entry of guns and drugs in Trinidad and Tobago. They also join with the police in any high level conference or event in planning the strategies and deploying personnel to ensure the safety and security of the delegates and participants. What we found with some of these things is that some of the respondents were quite aware of what was the goals of the defense force and the police. But what we found, those were only at a certain level. 
So like the commanders at that level, they were the ones who were aware. But this, the soldiers and police at the lower level, the ground level, who will actually be out on the field doing the patrols, they didn't have a clue of each other's primary roles and functions. Then we have another respondent, a female from the police service. Patrol assisting in foot and mobile patrols. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Defense force is not army alone. So I had to rethink my answer. So taking into consideration that the defense force does not comprise of the army alone, but the coast guard and the air guard, I don't know what their function is. So I wouldn't be able to say what their contribution is. These are people who are supposed to be working together. And this is what is coming out. So I am working with somebody towards a common goal, but I don't have a clue what they are supposed to be doing. Respondent number 45 is a soldier from the IATF, and that's the interagency task force that works with the police. Assistant to the police on sea, and with the land forces, example, manpower with resources also to increase the law enforcement capability, especially in high crime areas, for example, Enterprise and Laventil. And those are two areas that are deemed as hotspots. And the soldiers, at, as we speak, are presently stationed there to work with the police in this area. But some of those same ones don't have a clue as to, well, other than foot soldiers, we also have a Coast Guard who provides security on the porous borders where some of the drugs are coming in. Respondent number three, which is a female police officer from the second division who had no knowledge at all, or you could see 1%, I would say. I would say maybe one percent because I only see them on patrol. Sometimes they have joined patrol and I don't think that will make any dent in policing in Trinidad and Tobago. The number six, the patrols, all right, joined patrol. That is the only thing that they just do as far as I am concerned. Even though we have an air guard that mans the airspace and the coast guard that patrols the sea. Respondent number eight, which is eight, we have three people, and they are all soldiers. And this is how they felt, the soldiers now who are doing the joint patrol. The initial effect is tremendous. However, it becomes diluted because we are often mandated to continue operating in an area because of fear that the public confidence will drop once we withdraw. Next person, it began well. However, at present, it is too common and does not have the intended effect. Third person, initially, there was great respect for soldiers. But over time, this respect has been waning because soldiers are now becoming like police. TTR, which is the Trinidad and Tobago Regiment, should go out, execute, then pull back. Now soldiers are routine police. So shock impact on the population is lost. It is no longer significant. And the role of the police and the role of the defense force or our military is very, very different. The role of the military is to protect the sovereign good of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and its people. So when you have civil unrest, a state of emergency, your soldiers come out, your military, to put back law and order. Now you have soldiers who are trained to do that, coming out and trying to adapt a police in type of way, duty, to deal specifically with the public and to be able to ascertain when is uh, um, the correct type of force to use and when it is not and they are not trained to do that type of operations. Preliminary findings number three, we found that there was a high level of demotivation, and Higgins and Hales 2017 said, police must be engaged and must be proactive. And if you are not engaged and you are not proactive, 
then you wouldn't feel motivated if you are not engaged. And a respondent female who is in the police service for 13 years, this is how she felt. And this is to show you an example of the demotivation. I don't want to work either because if it is I have to be fighted every time I have to do something, I feel I shouldn't have to work either. Just come and do like everybody else and pass the time. Respondent number seven and nine from soldiers from the IATF. Yes, the troops are usually demotivated and often question why they must go out on operations that will not have any positive results. And the challenges, this was from a middle manager who is supposed to be in charge of the soldiers. And he was expressing that he had challenges. And his challenge was in keeping his soldiers motivated. And this is a very, very important issue that you are having both soldiers and police who are not motivated. So we have some preliminary recommendations. OK, our first recommendation is to improve communication. Improvement of communication is inter, intra, vertical, and horizontal. So at all the different levels across, as well as um, vertically. We also suggest that we can identify and consolidate what has been learned from different approaches that would have been used over the years in order to bring about meaningful results. Our third recommendation is the application sorry, of management principles. No longer must we use those archaic methods or approaches in treating with police and policing in Trinidad and Tobago, but apply modern management principles. And also in assessing persons' performance, we must apply a multiplicity of factors, not just only look at crime statistics as suggested by Sir Robert Peel, just the absence of crime and disorder, and you just look at the statistics, whether or not crime increased and or decreased, and then assume that police are performing or that they are effective and efficient. But we in the, to deal with the challenges of the 21st century, we must look at a multiplicity of factors in assessing police performance. And these are some of the implications um, this study would have in form police and defense force operations. It can bring about more appropriate interventions where we have challenges. We can look at our terms of engagement between the defense force and the police so that there could be greater synergy of objectives. And finally, we believe that it can also improve management. So the study is still ongoing. We have not concluded all our interviews as yet. So we hope that it would be developed as time goes on. So thank you all very much. Any questions, feel free. IATF, yes. They are not interested, mm. and probably they are actually not a good country for you to work. The, the military can't really care when it comes to assigning them to go to special operations. So I think it might be a good idea to consider a shift towards redesigning the environment, making it harder for crime to occur in the first place, rather than the current one. There are these problems that they make us Well, thanks for your recommendation. Yes, we have been focusing on catching and punishing the offender. Um, within recent times, though, I think we have moved a little bit from that. 
um, in recognition of the fact that that really is not working. And we have been looking at other approaches as well. Um, we're looking at crime prevention through environmental design. We have been looking at community engagement in order to win back the public's confidence in the police service. So we have been doing it, but I think we could do, as you rightly said, a whole lot more. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes, great. Thank you. Thanks. Um, if I might add one more thing. Um, the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force is very diverse. We have a lot of youth programs. So we have the MILAT and the Civilian Conservation Corps. And the MILAT house a group of mostly young men, and they keep them in. They carry them through um, a number of things in terms of academics and vocational skills, and we have a graduation where we let them out. So we keep them, train them. Um, some of them already have criminal offenses. So we make sure they go to court and have the necessary training and stuff with them. The Civilian Conservation Corps, on the other hand, is one where we try to catch the youth before they commit things. So we have two programs. We didn't just say, well, let us forget about the ones who already committed. So the military is really stretched. We are involved in a number of different things outside of just protecting the sovereign good because of the other part of the military is to render aid to the civil power. So we are always involved in different things. Thank you. Thank you also very much.